Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today I'm going to do a fun composition of a mermaid with some flying fish um, from start to finish, and I just wanted to show you the materials that we're going to use today. Um, I'm going to use, this is a sheet of um, Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper that I've cut. You can tell it's relatively thin, but it's basically um, 150 pound or 300 gram hot press watercolor paper and it's got a smooth surface to it but once I do the drawing and the ink um, I'm gonna have to tape it down because it'll buckle a bit and when you're painting on any kind of paper unless it's like um, oh around 500 pound is it no 500 gram my apologies 300 pound watercolor you might not have to tape it down but you're always gonna have a little buckling if it's not taped and the way you can avoid that also is this is a um, watercolor pad it's a watercolor block. This is Canson um, Montfal, Montfal, I think is the way you pronounce that. But they've got, it's got um, glue along the edges so you don't have to tape it. So if you want to avoid taping watercolor paper, um, you can buy pads. You can buy pads or what are known as blocks. And I usually use my blocks because they're more convenient. But in this case, I want to work on hot press paper and I want to do four by six inches. And they do not make hot press paper in four by six. Most of your hot press or most of your watercolor paper in blocks that is four by six inches is going to be um, rough. And we're also going to use today, this is a um, Cutman, Windsor & Newton, Cotman Traveling Watercolor Kit, and I like these um, for drawing and painting outdoors, and the reason why I'm using this today is because I found that when I'm doing watercolor demonstrations um, under the camera, you can't really see what I'm doing unless I use a smaller palette, so I'm going to be using this today so you can kind of see how I use the, the watercolor at this size. But we're going to start today by sketching in um, a mermaid. And I'm doing this for my cousin Tatum. And I want to have, I'm going to start with the head and the body and the pose. She's going to be jumping out of the water. And then I'm going to show her arms. So I, I'm starting with basically the general shapes of what I'm doing. So I'm going to put her hands here so she's like she's flying. And then I'm going to have a couple of flying fish next to her. So they're flying. And these are basically about the size of flying fish in Mexico. Um, different fish in different parts of the world are different sizes, but flying fish in Mexico are these beautiful, brilliant blue fish. And they can reach up to, I think, um, about two and a half feet. They're, they're good sized fish. But anyways, I'm gonna do um, a little girl mermaid and probably make her hair so it's covering the places that, you know, you could probably with little, if you were, if I were living in the Netherlands, we wouldn't care about the breasts, but I'm living in the United States and people are, are a little bit more concerned about that sort of thing. And I'm going to have water coming up. So I'm going to kind of indicate water here. And then you can tell I'm doing this is all scribbling. I'm, I'm giving myself masses here. It's like her chest is going to be here. So that's my initial rough is going to be just that scribbly. Now I'm going to come in with my kneaded eraser. I talk about kneaded erasers all the time. I use them a lot. Um, it's always in my initial work that I like to what do. What I'm doing right now is what I call ghosting back. I've kind of done a relatively heavy drawing, but there's enough here where I can see very lightly the initial drawing that I've done underneath. And then I want to do some more detail on her face. So here's her head, which is basically a circle. And then I'm giving her a jaw and her ear. And let's give her a, um, a scalloped ear because she's going to be a mermaid and she's going to have fish like scallops ears and she's going to be happy so I'm going to have I'm going to have her eyes closed and give her a little button nose and she's smiling and a smile will be a line and then you follow a line underneath 
and then you come in just a little and give a little bit of C for a lip. And then her neck will go there and her shoulders. And I usually have like a mitt for a hand and your general hand is usually you think about it as like three fingers and you divide the, the third in the center in half because the way our, our hands work, those two fingers in the center have a tendency to go together. So you can see like the three fingers here and then I'll just divide that, that center finger in half and that's how I, and then this area is like, um, a diamond or a square sh a diamond shape so the diamond the, the pointy finger is at the top of the di diamond and then the thumb goes on the corner the th other fingers go across this side of the diamond and then that's the flat of the hand and then your wrist fits in here so that's how you can put together a hand and let's see here Maybe I should have her, give her a lay of flowers. That is what I'll do. Or I know, better yet, we give her a, a necklace of shells and seaweed across the top. And then her tail is going to go back and up. And we'll give it a kind of an S shape. And you'll notice I'm kind of flowing into it. And... They're gonna, you want to pinch it right about there and split the tail. This is kind of a C shape, but I always like to put a little bit of an S in here. And we had the fish. Let's see here. Because we want the fish are going to go across here and their wings are going to go out the same. And the thing is, is they're, they're actually fins, but on flying fish, they go out like wings. And they have an eye there. And their body. Is pretty much um, leaf shaped is the best best way to sh describe it because it'll be an arc up and an arc down, and then their back tail is a little shorter than their lower tail. This tail will sometimes act as this bottom of the um, tail acts like a rudder in the water, and we'll do the same up here. And the thing is, is that if you don't know what a flying fish looks like, um. Go online and look it up. We've got the Google will show you what flying fish look like. And that way you can get them more or less correct. Or you can make up your own flying fish. I mean, it's it's like, let's face it, there aren't, aren't any mermaids out there. Her forearms here. Shoulder. Shoulder. Okay. And again, I'm going to give myself an idea of where I want the water okay and that's enough for my underdrawing now I'm going to blot away and swipe away some of that graphite again I want a little bit more I've done much closer to what I want in the drawing this time around so I'm not gonna erase it quite as much back as I would and what you really want to do is like erase the things you don't want to see and keep the ones you, you do and then again you can see there's a bit of the drawing still there but it's done what, what I call ghosting back now the next thing I'm going to do I'm doing this in ballpoint pen the 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 line drawing on top I'm doing a ballpoint pen now you note by the time I get done with this painting, I will have gone over the same drawing technically between three and five times. And each time I do the drawing, it's refining it and refining it like you would um, if you've ever done any carving or you've ever worked in wood, you use finer and finer grit sandpaper until it gets to a polish. And that's kind of the same way I work when I'm drawing. Now, what I did, just did right there is that um, this is ballpoint pen. This is a standard Bic um, medium round point stick. I use Bic sticks all the time. I absolutely love them. Um, but what I do is that the ball will build up this uh, a bit of ink on it. And you'll occasionally want to wipe it off because otherwise you'll get blots. And sometimes I like the blots. Um, they're like accents in the drawing. 
um, but I, I try to keep them to a minimum. And in this case, um, I will occasionally um, clean off my my pen so I don't have as much uh, of the pen there. Um, okay, so now as we're doing the pen, you'll notice that I'm very sketchy in the way that I draw with pen. I have a tendency not to uh, do one complete line. You can tell I stroke over a stroke. To make sure that uh, when I to get a full clean line, I'm not good at doing. Now you can see there's a little blot there. So it, like I said, it will blot. You will get little blurps of um, ink from ballpoint pen. But with me, um, I like to. Um, I like the kind of the heavy little blops. They're like little punctuation marks. So I don't mind them. And what I'll do too is if I get a blop where I don't want it, um, after the ink dries, I will go in and clean it up with an X-Acto knife. I can, you can scrape away the ink with an X-Acto knife. And then you go in and you clean up the paper with um, your, your kneaded eraser and a latex eraser. Now the thing is here with, with um, ballpoint pen, it has a very subtle line. It um, goes down in uh, kind of a, how, how shall I say, it? Um, it's not completely black. It'll go um, up and down in its quality. So it, it goes on very silky and smooth and it's kind of a dancing line. and. That's what I like about it, especially over the smooth paper. It works quite well on the um, the cold press as well. But in this case, um, on the uh, the hot press paper, it works pretty well. Okay, now we want to make sure I want to, I'm going to, um, I said I wanted to do seaweed. I'm a big fan of kelp. I really like kelp. Um, I live on the California coast. And you always find a variety of, of seaweed on the beach. She, yeah, seaweed. That's good. Seaweed on the beach. And um, I've always been a big fan of kelp. But so, you know, they've got long leaves that come up from the bottom. They attach to the, the rocks and come up from the bottom. And that way, we can be modest with our little mermaid here. And I did her hands a little bit differently. I'm gonna again it's the diamond. And fingers are like lined together, lined together in an arc across the palm. And there's your thumb. And there's the diamond one finger like I said you do the center is like two fingers together and you just divide them in half and the pinky and since that that arm's going a little away from this this arm will be a little bit um, shorter than that one because it's behind, I'm going away from camera. I use terms like I'm into camera and away from camera because I am a storyboard artist. Okay, now we have our fish right here, right? So we have to draw our fish in front. And mind you, yeah, flying fish actually have a frown. They're very frowny looking fish. But I don't want these to be frowny fish, so I'm gonna give them give them a little bit of a smile. And they have a fin on the bottom. These two fins flare out too. Fins on the side. And 
and they have a let's see a dorsal fin. It's way back there. Now I should probably drop this down a little bit more, give it negative space in there. What I might do is I might come back in with an exacto knife to clean that out. Because I, as I'm looking and going, mm, I'd like that I have a little negative space in there. So I might fix that before we paint it. And I'm giving her, these are the rays of her fins. Okay, now you can see on the tip of the, um, there we go, on the tip of the uh, ink here that that ink is building up there. And you can see it, I'm just cleaning that off. Because otherwise that big glop of ink is going to go right on to my drawing. So I'd rather not and not go on the drawing. See, the flying fish had more mouth that goes like down like that. And a little smile instead. Okay. Okay, so you can see where I blopped it a bit with the ink. Now it'll just become part of the composition. I said, unless, unless it really is annoying or something that I don't like, it just becomes a part of the personality of the picture. And that's something that you have to decide if you want or not. If you're very precise and you don't like things to look rough or out of place, that might be something that you want to get rid of. Um, something that I rather like. And I've gotten used to too, because I like using ballpoint pen. Um, because it, 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 it has a more fluid quality to it than when you're using um, traditional India ink. And I like both. I have, they both have their qualities to them. Let me give her some scales. And what I'll do too is that I'm doing this drawing as it is. I will paint it and then I always go over my, my drawings or my paintings afterwards after they dry and tighten up the detail with the pen. Um, so they, it doesn't look as loose when it's totally complete. That's pretty much the drawing right there. I'm going to turn off the camera now and um, basically let this one sit because you want to let it sit for about 15-20 minutes tops just so the ink dries and you don't smear anything because what I'm going to do the next thing I want to do is um, erase all the underdrawing and um, to do the painting on the top. Let's see here. Let's give her her hair back in there a little more. There we go. Um, so I want to let this sit for, like I said, about 15-20 minutes just so that that ink won't smear on me. And then um, we'll erase the drawing and do the painting. So the next time you see me, this will have sat for 20 minutes. <laughs> 